Hey everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of Spoiler Force Podcast. You can find more episodes on any podcasting platform such as Apple Podcast, Spotify, Amazon, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to follow Spoiler Force Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. This is Mark Witten, and you're listening to Spoiler Force Podcast. Set your heart ablaze. So this is episode 95 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky, and thank you for tuning in. This week's guest is someone I'm super excited to have. You may have heard his voice on Demon Slayer as Ren Goku. Uh, he's also in Genshin Impact as Kazuha. Street Fighter V as Alex. He's also in Fire Emblem and, and many, many multiple games here. And let me just introduce my guest here, Mark Witten. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. You know, I really like your setup. Uh, I love having uh, see because I don't have any of like the noise canceling panels or anything. I just have my oh, banner please. back here, right? Yeah. <laughs> noise canceling banner. That's not like super dense foam back there, too. No, there's just straight up <laughs> drywall. Just a banner. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm slowly slowly working on getting. I I have like some foam somewhere in, in, on my cabinet, but it's not like it's, it's not, it doesn't. It just like six squares you know it's like doesn't really do anything <laughs> you just keep it over there to the side yeah, like <laughs> yeah like, and, and you know what sucks too is because i don't because right now I'm, I'm currently living in oklahoma right now so mm -hmm. I, i'm bunking with my two other uncles we shared this huge master bedroom together because uh the owners that used to own this house they it was like a retirement home and then uh they had like a, a grandson or a son that was living here and he was i think he had like a physical disability Mm -hmm. So he he has like his own bathroom here and like so me and my uncles were like hey, we're just take this room because the uh, other people that live with us they they took the smaller rooms so we just all bunk in here so I'm like real literally in the corner of the room here so I'm like way in the back <laughs> you are carving out your own space you need like the PVC pipe partition like put some right? burning pads over <laughs> this is the spoiler forest podcast is is coming exclusively from the northeast corner of the room <laughs> that's awesome though no you sound great man thank you you know I, I i've noticed too like a lot of voice actors since because of covid like you, you, a lot of you guys are just like working from home now and making like makeshift studios or like just turning your closet into these <laughs> two studios it, I, I really like that i think that's really creative that you guys can still work at home and still get your job done yeah, yeah. I mean, we had to. Um, that was, I mean, and obviously all of us are eternally grateful uh, for the business that we're in, uh, especially during this time, because it was one of the few things in entertainment that kept on going. But yeah, you're right. Like the the capability to do things from even a closet. I have a I have a booth, but a lot of folks just, you know, a lot of winter coats and and uh, spare blankets and and a nice closet space works out pretty well actually too you'd, you'd be surprised um and then of course when the pandemic hit they'd ship around nice rigs too to make it even easier for folks to record from home if you didn't already have the equipment and the setup and yada 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 and are you planning to i guess because I, I know you do podcasts these are you are you planning to i guess make your own studio soon or like uh, upgrade your your recording area <laughs> uh this uh right now is is uh is working for me so i don't have any <laughs> until i actually move physical locations to like a, a a house where i can like maybe you know sculpt out a space right now this uh this little studio bricks booth is nice it it fits into the corner i can move it around if i ever get a wild hair um no and yeah because of doing the podcast actually it's pretty convenient with that even uh, a lot of folks that we have on the podcast to do it with us uh, they just send in files from their own spaces and then I do the audio engineering and I have my own dedicated space to record as well so that makes it pretty easy but yeah uh, I don't know I'll let you know when I do some upgrades maybe we can uh, put together a build your own booth version of spoiler force as I <laughs> take <laughs> the be, foray <laughs> that would be really dope you know because I, I, I'm looking forward to like uh, once once I do like get my own space to because like I said I'm living in Oklahoma I'm working on a farm so um, once I get like my first 
bulk of the paycheck <laughs> hopefully try right. to invest that into in, <laughs> into a, a studio because like that that's something that i've because i've only just started podcasting for about like two maybe two and a half years now um but I, I, at least on my own um but you know i i guess w using the equipment that i have right now it's really convenient i can move it's easy to move and stuff but i i've seen like the the pros of just like having your own studio and and especially with how things are today with everything being online, like just, just having your background look professional is starting to be a thing. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, no, totally. Which is why I got the banner. <laughs> there you go. Hey, the banner's an upgrade, man. The banner's an upgrade, but yes, I mean like, yeah, being, having all the Twitch streamers, you know, folks doing a lot of online content, having that sculpted out space is nice. Plus also it feels like it, it just something that feels like it's yours that you can do your work in that place and you're not also doing your work, you know, where you're having breakfast or like chilling with your friends, like to have that workspace, I think is, is really nice, which is why I um, am a big advocate of like getting a booth because as much as I loved my closet recording days, <laughs> it, it really kind of uh, shifts your mindset when you, when you step into what is your dedicated space to do the thing. So that's perfect. No, I, I do want to uh, kind of for the viewers and fans who may not know your background, can you kind of just let them know how you got into just voice acting and acting in general? Sure. Um, yeah, I was I was in into acting uh, since I've been uh, a little kid. Um, I was kind of always a, always a ham and I uh, had two older brothers who definitely uh, provoked that sort of instinct out of me into <laughs> doing whatever they told me and I obliged. Um, <laughs> and uh, then from there, I started doing theater. Um, I, I did a lot of theater and musical theater. I'm a singer. Um, and how I transitioned into voiceover is I kind of figured that I was going to go the stage route and be living in New York City. And um I actually switched gears and and uh, and got interested in doing film and on camera. And so I came out here to L.A. And in the process of doing that, I found myself in possession of a really nice microphone because I was starting to like make web series. And I was like, I'm going to create my own content and do all this cool stuff. And uh, I was like, I have this mic. I'm going to try out for some VO stuff, too. So I just started looking for contacts out here in Los Angeles and networking with people. Um, I made my own demos. And so uh, it, it's funny. There are a lot of folks out here that are actually the, the VO community is lovely. And they were like, yeah, sure. I'll listen to this demo from this person I have never met before. <laughs> and luckily I got a lot of good advice from, from some really wonderful folks um, pointing me in the right direction. And uh, after that, I was able to kind of get myself an agent and, and really get involved in auditioning, meeting more people, doing more auditions. You know, it's all a process of like, it's it's kind of this Ouroboros of uh, uh, of a plan that you do. You know, you, you do an audition or a job, you meet more people, you kind of do more stuff for them. And it's like this big cycle until hopefully you make it success. I think that's how it works. <laughs> I really do enjoy seeing like the network that a lot of voice actors have together, especially like like when I now that I'm getting a, a bit more voice actors on my podcast too, and like just following you guys on Twitter or on Instagram, like I I love seeing how everyone's just in a way in the same circle still, you know. Like I, I was I was speaking with um, another voice actor yesterday, which the episode won't drop till September, but she was like excited to to see that I had you as a guest, and so like the the. I just love the voice acting community because it's like it's like you guys are all like like a class together or something like that. You know, you guys all just know each other. Like, oh yeah, I've worked with you before, and then just next thing you know, you're on another series working with them too. So it's really good right. cool to see that. Which is kind of funny because we rarely ever see each other on the jobs that we work on, right? <laughs> like we're always we're always uh, you know in single sessions for the most part or passing each other in the lobby. Um, so it's kind of funny because we we don't see each other that often, which I don't know if that if that necessarily like makes us uh, come together a little bit more when we do. Um, but there's also a lot of like mutual respect for people who you know, there's so many good voice actors out there and so many great performances and and genuinely people are very supportive of each other. And, you know, when someone's crushing it on a part or lands a really good role, 
uh, people are widely very excited for them. And I think that that's lovely. You know, it's nice to see your friends doing good things and doing cool things and, and to be happy for them doing that. Yeah, I love seeing like huge projects bringing a lot of like variety of talent. You know, Demon Slayer being one of the big projects out, and that's really mainstream right now. Um, I I started watching Demon Slayer when it first aired on on Crunchyroll. Like I, I watched the sub version first. Okay. Um, so when when I first watched it, I, I was like, all right, you know, I, I just got done watching the, I, I'm not sure if you know of uh, the Goblin Slayer series. I just got done watching that. No, uh, what's Goblin Slayer? <laughs> I've oh, not heard man. of it. Goblin Slayer is a pretty mature uh, anime. It's it, it's like D and D okay. sort of, but then it, it it's pretty cool. It's, just, it's strategic and in, in like a lot of medieval styled uh, uh, characters, but it's just that first episode is kind of like pretty. It gives you a pretty like uh, shock factor, big shock factor in the first episode. <laughs> I don't right. want to say on the podcast. No, 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 it's, no. It's don't. Pretty yeah. appropriate. <laughs> this is called spoiler force, though. So yeah, I mean... <laughs> one of the characters she gets attacked by goblins. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it there, and we'll move on to the next topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that first episode, man, I was shook because uh, I. I I knew it was pretty hype just based off of like the the comment threads like on Reddit and stuff like that. But then I was not expecting that first episode to be like that. And but okay. then it, it in an odd way it just still drew me in to watch the rest of the series because it was only like twelve episodes. But that following season of that year was Demon Slayer, which came out like a month, not even a month after. And and you know Demon Slayer, I, I did I had no idea that it was already a pretty hot manga at that time. Mm-hmm. And then just watching it. I just gradually just liked it, and then up to where you meet, uh, you know, episode nineteen, where the huge fight happens for Tanjiro and yeah. between him and Rui, and then so good the, the introduction to the Hashiras, and then by that time, I think that's when I, I think I might be wrong here, but by that time, the dub was slowly introducing like the cast of all like the English dub actors, and. and you know, I, I want to bring this up too, because like the cast for the Hashiras, man, like they went all out. Like with you, Kaiji Tang, uh, Ray, uh, Ray Chase, or, Ray Chase. Yeah. Uh, oh man, like you guys are all fantastic, man. Like <laughs> that, that's that's similar. It's similar to like that's a pretty stacked team, and it matches with the Hashiras because you get, that's a stacked group of warriors there. Yeah, and and, and with the movie that just came out. Oh my god! Like, what, what was your thoughts on that on, on the Demon Slayer movie? Because that's a huge role for you, right there. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, uh, and it's funny with with talking about the the A team of the Hashira coming in. <laughs> I I kind of didn't even know totally what I was getting my foot into, what I was stepping into, because I I had not uh, read the manga. Um, I still haven't read the manga because I really love watching the show and I love like <laughs> I love when the show is just like hitting I love to be hit with it visually, orally, like the whole thing all at once. Um however, a lot of folks have said fantastic things about the manga. I'm sure it's wonderful and so I'm like hotly debating in my head whether I start getting into that. To that end, jumping into the movie, um when I sort of when it landed on my brain, the scope of of what was happening and and what my personal responsibility with voicing Rengoku was going to be, I got really nervous. <laughs> like <laughs> I usually don't get like stage fright uh, at all or uh, or get nervous about projects. Um, you know, I just kind of go in and do what I do. But with this one, I, I had to take like I did take like a day or two and and like kind of kind of just you know take some deep breaths and be like okay you got a job to do and you know so there might be some stuff riding on this some something more than <laughs> more than normal here it's going to be uh you know it's a beloved it's a beloved story there's a lot of eyes and ears it's obviously done really well so yeah i had i had some nerves going into it to to be honest um but it was a it was fantastic you know jumping into the booth and and as with any performance Generally, I'm I'm I'll be nervous up until the point when I get on stage, and then it just kind of melts away, and you you kind of get in the zone of just performing. What was your thoughts on you know just that entire like 
I'm pretty sure when you watch it as a, an actor watching yourself play that role, what, what was your what was going through your mind? Like just knowing what was going to happen to Ren Goku. <clears throat> well, um, it's it's more uh, trying to play moment to moment rather than trying okay. to play the end of a thing. You know, um, trying to like kind of keep from one's mind the conclusion of it if that makes any <laughs> sense so yes while i know where it's headed and everything uh rengoku doesn't know necessarily where it's headed he's staking his uh he's he's taking his chances and he's drawing his lines in the sand without necessarily knowing for sure that that's going to be the outcome now it's funny because during during the fight with akaza it seems like he fully is aware at a certain moment before it happens that he 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 kind of makes that decision i mean he makes it right off the bat but there's a moment even when you're beaten and battered to grit your teeth again and charge back into the fray knowing full well that it could be futile and so you know addressing each of those moments as they come up I, I find is is obviously the best way to do it um from an act actor's perspective understanding the scope and the whole and where we're going helps to kind of sculpt the performance so that we get to the right place but as far as each particular moment you got to take each of those as it comes and just trust that you understand the journey and uh and then kind of give over to what's going on right there with that line with those um with those breaths with those uh efforts as it were plenty of efforts in that session yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah that that movie definitely was a, a tearjerker for me because even reading yeah. the manga like and, and that's the thing I love about what they did with Demon Slayer in the anime, like for the animation aspect of it, because in the manga, it's very short. That battle is very mm -hmm. short. But the way how they span that out within like 30 to 35 minutes of just Rengoku and yeah. Akasa going back and forth. And, and you know, I, I loved how f for you, um, Mark, that that sense of urgency where he knows that either he's going to either die anyway or he's going to win and, and, you know, come out really battered. So he had just keep going 100% throughout that entire fight but mm -hmm. you know that the part where right after Akaza just you know sticks his arm through him and, and after that climb like that super fantastic animation scene just doing the ninth the, the ninth form you know what was going through your head during that scene like knowing that he was he was trying to still kill Akaza even though he was like pierced Oh my God. I mean, I'm even like, <laughs> I'm even getting a couple of chills about it right now because I mean, in that moment, you know, you're, you're addressing it as it comes up and, and you see that like me, Mark is like, holy, <laughs> but like when you see, when, when you know that like for Rengoku, that's, it, there is, there is no giving up on that promise that he made. There is no compromising with, uh, with his, uh, you know, with with what it means to be human, with what it means to protect those who are younger, weaker, in need of protection, to look over your fellows, basically. I mean, he he's just uncompromising in that. And I don't know, like I said, it gives you it gives you chills to just be like, even with someone's arm through your gut, to just be like, no. I do not give up and and uh it's it's exciting to in, in that moment to kind of address that and to to you know you, I'm I'm seeing it on screen of course cuz we're dubbing it and seeing like what's going through it but then also like knowing that I'm gritting my teeth and pushing through that moment and and it's really exciting it's exhilarating to to just be like to grab on to that sort of pure sense of of duty and honor in that moment and push through and i remember those those moments when he's just like screaming out not screaming but you know he's just he's gritting his teeth and the the kind of battle cries uh it was crazy because usually you you look at some of these battle cries and they they can be like 
10 seconds to 15 seconds of just like this emotional impassioned uh impassioned roar and that can be kind of daunting because you're like mm, that's gonna scratch my throat <laughs> but in that moment in particular with this recording it didn't feel <laughs> i didn't feel any of that and it was really it was really cool i was just uh just kind of tried to let all of that go in that moment and just pay all the attention to you know not giving up on myself or the people that i need to protect man i you broke that down really well i like that i like that answer you know because because <laughs> even like till to his dying breath friend goku like like you said man he still stepped forward and it's just it really just amazed me to see like how not just you, but both both you and the original actor as well. Like, there's, you know, you guys put everything you guys had into that character, and which is why that I, I think that Rengoku really stole that whole movie. Yeah, you know, there's like so many people that I know that that were like I have, I, I even have a little figurine right here. You know, everyone that I know, <laughs> everyone is like buying yes. Rengoku figures and 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 Go Rengoku statues and, and like people just absolutely love this character. He's so um, good. And to that end, as you mentioned, Satoshi Hino is fantastic. I've also watched the sub too. And uh, and man, he's just amazing. He does a really great job. And I felt so, so honored to be able to, uh, you know, to be able to be a part of that performance, a part of his performance, um, you know. And I, I know we, in, in the dub and in any dub, you, you make it uh a little bit your own but like the core of it is so much within him that it's it, it was really cool and listen to that did you feel like uh i know you said you felt nervous but was there pressure i guess like trying to be i guess like was there like an expectation that you felt that because he did so well in the movie too <laughs> um uh, nothing nothing more than just a pressure from myself oh. um you know uh I was aware, obviously, and that that's that's a part of it. But I mean, that's also instead of being something that I had to like, obviously, it wasn't ever something that I had to be better than, or if anything, something that I wanted to live up to. But even in those moments of thinking of it in that meta way, it's funny because you can take those feelings and uh, and as an actor, it's it's kind of funny. Like I want to live up to that. I mean, I can weave that in to use that feeling in the performance itself, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, right. there's a way in which striving to something, striving to be the best that you can be. Um, if I'm already feeling that to begin with, I can use that sort of thing and, and like kind of grit my own teeth with my own conviction and use it to the character's purpose. Yeah, because I I think you know because again like with, with this like whole sub and dub type of thing you know I'm pretty sure you're aware of this too I I really respect English act English voice actors uh, that that's that take the time to put their effort and their own uniqueness into these characters you know because because I so talking to like a few other voice actors from different anime shows too like you know I I never really took the time to understand like. There's the timing difference, then the mouth flaps, and like huh. very small technical things that I, yeah. as just a general viewer, would not even consider or think of. So I, I mean, like especially you know, again with, with the show like Demon Slayer, man, that I I would feel very overwhelmed <laughs> knowing <laughs> that there's a show that that that's global, and, and you know, there's like again, there's a certain expectations that you might feel like you have to meet. But overall, man, Mark, you did a fantastic job as Ren Goku. You know, I really appreciate it. You know, I, I, you know, watching it, um, because I, I don't want to say too much to where it sounds like I'm bashing on it, right? But I, I felt like your performance was well, and, and I think you did a great job playing Ren Goku, especially you know the the ending monologue, his last words to Tanjiro, you know, and, and that that's like I'll, even on my on my Twitter headline, I have set your heart ablaze. You know, like, the way how he's just <laughs> so motivational still as as he's mm -hmm. dying. And I loved how you brought that out too, like to, to even though like it was a very sad and uh, very tear jerking moment that he like 
the way how you performed his voice wasn't he, there wasn't like a sense of like where he was afraid you know you you did that very well thanks so much yeah it's it's a he's a funny and unique character in that right because you think that oh he's going to be <laughs> you would you would imagine a character like that to be kind of like maybe heaving or more in pain or not certainly not necessarily at peace uh or 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 so motivational towards them but he he kind of bucks that trend and uh and that's i think a really like wonderfully admirable thing about him is that is that he does like he's there and he's like don't be sad don't be sad that i'm gonna die like don't worry about that and and while the three of them are just a mess yeah. <laughs> which is great like <laughs> just inosuke and and zenitsu like all of them are just bawling but at the same time he's like he's he's just he's just totally at peace he did his duty you know he he uh he knew what he was serving and who he was serving and uh, just oh man when his mother appears it just oh man oh just kills me <laughs> but i mean yeah. it's it's hard also as an actor um i'll say one of the interesting things i find about just performing any role especially roles that are uh, more emotional um is that there can be a tendency and it's a trap to like fall into the emotion yourself um because it can become like an over it can become a self-indulgence in that moment and as sad as it is like like kind of keeping the lid on that as much as possible i think really makes you live on the edge of where that character is emotionally interesting and emotionally poignant it's not generally it's not the character that is <laughs> supposed to be crying their eyes out it's the audience um because the character is living through something that is you know tragic in that moment and it's it's tragic that he is a, a sweet boy at the end of it a sweet boy who's asking a question of his mom and it's very simple it's very quiet it's very honest you know he just wants to know that he if he if he did the right thing you know and i, I think it's <laughs> it makes you tear up as an audience member but for him it's a very honest question and it's a very happy moment between him and his mom, I think. And that's what makes it even sadder for us is because <laughs> you're like, you're like, oh, my God, this is so sweet. Like, like it's, it's, he gets so to see pure. his mother again. It's so <laughs> yeah. pure. And, and it just like that's as an actor, it's funny with those moments because as we view them, like. I want to break down, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, hold it back. Hold it back, buddy. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Trying not to cry in the booth. <laughs> right. Right. Cause that Have moment, you... that moment is, is definitely it. It's, it's just that moment of, of, uh, of fully giving over to it and fully accepting it. And <laughs> Yeah, that, that's one thing I really admire about actors too, because I, I have some actor friends back at uh, back at home in Michigan that mm. you know they're independent actors and stuff like that, and I I even ask them like how do how do they maintain the emotional aspect of things when it comes to like certain characters that they're writing about or performing, and, and I have a friend I I told him like can you cry like on the spot like because that <laughs> that's something like I I always like loved about actors how they can still maintain. Their emotions like one one example i i've mentioned before on this podcast was like on game of thrones where mm -hmm. uh where, where the actress for sansa like uh, she was crying on the scene where uh where um what's his name uh don't Night. spoil it too much for me haven't oh. seen beyond the fifth <laughs> oh okay i've read okay. the books okay okay I, I won't good thing you brought that up i will oh i, I know this is it. spoiler force okay. but okay but got holds okay. uh an interesting uh, uh, yeah. place in my heart. <laughs> I won't say much, but in the in the last season, there's a character who passes, and Sansa, the actress for Sansa, was you know she's crying because the character's passed. But there was like a behind the scene photo where she, where Sophie Turner, still maintained like the emotion, mm -hmm. and she was crying. And I asked my 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 actor friend, I was like, how how do you maintain that? Because if it was me, I would be like torn apart because you have to be like. <laughs> 
you have to keep your emotions in, but it's not real. But then you still have to, like you said, keep the lid on. And it, right. it, it's it's a lot. <laughs> it is a delicate dance. Uh, and I mean, that's, it's funny with, with that. There are, that's another cool thing about acting. There, there are a, a myriad way, a number of ways to approach something like that. And there are a lot of different techniques. So I think you talk to any given actor on here, you'll probably hear different methods and techniques from all of us. And maybe some of us use similar things. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's funny because it is hard. It is, it is kind of like that, uh, a very fine line to walk. Um, but it, it's, it's odd because you also like think about the idea of like, you need to practice that. Or there is merit to practicing that, to knowing that you can do it reliably and functionally. But also, I'm sure that an actor could come on here and be like, don't practice it at all. You have to do it <laughs> once and in that moment. So, I mean, even even with my own explanation, I can refute myself. Uh, but that's probably for another, like, we'll, we'll uh, create a second podcast where it'll just be called talking about, uh, <laughs> talking about tactics uh, with different <laughs> well actors. I mean, I mean, since since we're on this topic too, though, Mark, have you felt like where, you know, playing emotional scenes like that has has that ever, have you tried not to let that affect you, like in your actual life? You know, ha, ha, it, do you know do you, do you find yourself like knowing where to draw that line? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, that's that's a that's a good question. Uh, I feel like I've always maintained a pretty good, um, a pretty good boundary with that where where nothing like really creeps into my life too much but then i that's how i kind of operate with with acting i think it can be practiced i think that i don't necessarily have to live it uh in order to convey it uh if that makes any sense so yes i i do keep that boundary up and i think it's totally possible and i think there are uh, a number of actors where that you can point to that are living examples of exactly that um and that's just how i choose to live with it but you know there are plenty of great performances where people get absorbed in it too so <laughs> <laughs> who's to say but i'm i'm able to keep a pretty good distance but that also works for me for my sanity in my personal life um you know, some things when I get tied to a project and when I'll be uh, rehearsing it or performing it, uh, it can take a toll. And I feel exhausted after certain performances. Um, but I'm able to kind of pack it away pretty easily. Sometimes I might have to, you know, decompress, uh, you know, take a walk around the block or something. But but I I definitely leave my work at the at the office and, and that's how it should be because it's at the end of the day it's still work <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's not, yeah. it's not it's, it shouldn't be something that you bring home and and still carry on with it <laughs> but ha, ha, have you felt like was there any um i guess challenges or difficulties when it comes to being like an emotional actor when it comes to just doing voicing and, and ver versus like real life performance um yeah well a lot of the things that um that are difficult or different between voice acting to say uh, on screen or on stage is that it's it's very immediate with voice acting and so you have to find or at least i've found that i need to find ways to get to that place quickly because you know you, you're not you're not spending hours to months rehearsing a thing you are doing it very quickly. The, like the turnaround is is intense. And yet you still want to do it honestly and you still want to do it authentically. So finding ways to do that and to really kind of clear your mind and to focus uh, on those moments and, and not try to fabricate those moments, um, I, I find to be, that that is a difficult thing sometimes. Uh, and I hope I, I always hope that I'm I'm doing everything that I can. But, you know, uh, would I love to rehearse something for two months and then go in for a group recording session and, and have that be the performance we lay down? Absolutely. But we don't have that luxury. So for the in the meantime, 
a lot of it I try to tap into uh, physically when I'm doing things. Um, I find that uh, breath really connects very well to uh, to emotion. And so I will use my breath as much as I can, um, you know, whether it, it'll be the rhythm, it'll be the, the depth of it, uh, in order to kind of physically get my body into a place that for whatever emotional quality we're looking for. And then also physically to get my stature into that place. And those are things we can do behind the mic that look ridiculous if you film them, but right. they're not going to sound ridiculous when they come <laughs> through. And if anything, it's going to get your body into that sort of position. Oh, you know what? I you ever see that clip of Hugh Jackman doing ADR to Wolverine? Oh, yeah. It's amazing, I, right? Like he yeah. is full on living it. And that that's that's an example I could point to right there where I'm like, you are you need to be that connected all the time and like on cue. So yeah, it's difficult, but like that's that's the sort of dedication and and uh, and attention to detail that it takes. Uh, that that's a perfect example of like just pure voice acting, and because I've seen voice actors where like like especially in anime where you're charging or or making a like like a long range scream or battle cry like they're like hunching over and like clenching their fist, yeah. you know, and, and like so you have to perform like that in order to get that those vocals out, mm -hmm. but. I, I do want to mention this too. Like when you brought up the whole Hugh Jackman thing, there was like this meme version of it where he's like hitting, like where he's like killing something. And, but then on the screen, it's like Minecraft or something like that. It's so just, like, <laughs> <laughs> it just overlays something else. Yeah. So I, I, I was just, when you were, when you brought that up, I was just purely thinking of that. All you're that thinking was, of is a bunch of creepers. And yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> because like, you know, Hugh Jackman in there, he's like, Hugh. <sighs> and on the screen is just him hacking like a tree with the, with the pickaxe <laughs> <laughs> which is hard work it would be hard work at the rate you do it in minecraft come on yeah <laughs> we need some we need some crazy efforts for that game. <laughs> want a simpler way to record both video and audio podcasts then sign up with Streamyard. Streamyard is the perfect program to create podcasts, host live streams, and even do video calls. There are many tools to help you create and design your own personal studio. You can screen share, read live comments, and stream to multiple destinations such as Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You can also download your video and audio recordings after each session. Follow the link in the description, and once you sign up with the basic or pro plan, you'll earn a $10 credit to use for Streamyard. Do you want to start your own podcast? Then sign up with Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout has helped hundreds of thousands of users to begin their podcasting journey. With easy to use tools, you can effectively get your podcast onto many platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, and more. You can view stats, create audio clips, and even have your own podcasting website. Buzzsprout also offers ideas, tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you improve your podcast. Follow the link below, and once you sign up, you'll get a $20 Amazon gift card. This will let Buzzsprout know that I sent you and also support Spoiler Force Podcast. Happy podcasting. If you're into anime, manga, or anything that's from Japan, Otaku Detroit is the place for you. Located at 513 West, 11 Mile Road in Madison Heights, Michigan, you can find a variety of manga books, anime figures, collectibles, posters, snacks, and even authentic items from Japan. Stop on by to see store owner Matt and let him know Spoiler Force sent you. You know, I, I do want to transition this as well because... Uh, to this next topic here because i when, when we first spoke i i thought you went to convention and so uh you, oh, you right. recently just got back from one from one i right? did yeah it was my first one back after uh after covid and my only only my second convention period so, really wow i'm, I'm okay. pretty fresh to the scene um of cons yeah because yeah, I, I know you went with uh, i i don't recall the actors that you went with but it was another like uh they were also voices of Genshin Impact as well, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, Todd Haberkorn was there, Kaylee Mills, Abby Trot, um, uh, let's see, Eric Vale, Neil Kaplan, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, Stephanie Nadolny. I'm, I'm probably leaving out uh, some folks. Oh, Griffin Burns uh, was there for a child. He was on the the Genshin uh, panel. Lots of lots of great actors. Austin Tyndall. Um, there were a lot of us. 
at this convention. It was called WeebCon down in Dallas, and it was, right, it was fantastic. Right, right. Uh, it was really wonderful to see, it, and also to anyone, if I if I left anyone out, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love okay, all y'all. Yeah, yeah. Colleen O'Shaughnessy, she was there. Um, let's see. Yeah, there were a lot. Oh, and uh, David Vincent. Oh, my gosh. Now I'm going to be just like checking off the boxes <laughs> so I don't miss anyone. You have the whole list in your hand. All right, I got to <laughs> shout them all out. <laughs> Anywho, the energy, the the attendance, the 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 love that was coming from that convention was was absolutely insane. It was really it was really fun, like getting to meet folks. And the last time I did a convention was right before COVID uh, kind of closed everything down. And at that point in time, like you know, Demon Slayer hadn't even really released. The movie hadn't come out. Genshin wasn't a thing. So like two of these huge things that that uh, that a lot of folks are you know buzzing about and talking about hadn't happened. I was just it was just Fire Emblem uh, back then. It was the entire Fire Emblem cast that we got together with uh, down in Pomona, California, um, for a, a convention down here, which was really cool. So yeah, yeah. freshy to the con circuit. No, that, I think that's perfect. I, I love <clears throat> seeing like when when you know I, I had a, I don't know if you know her, but I had Ann Yatko on the podcast too, and mm -hmm. she. She recently went to her first con, and and we, we we spoke before she actually went to her first con in DC. I think it was Otakon, and, and I love seeing oh, yeah. like when when actors, especially voice actors, who who come to the con scene, because at the same time it's it's almost like you got you're kind of like us in a way, like like oh my god, this is new to me, but then you're at the booth, you're a guest, you're invited, <laughs> so it's like it's it's a more down to earth type of feeling when you're meeting, or at least from my experience, when when I'm meeting voice actors. Because it's it's not so much that you guys aren't well known, but it's you know you're still climbing up the ranks in a way. Mm -hmm. You're still getting your brand out there. You're still you're still growing in, in the media, versus like actors who are already you know let's say accomplished like the Walking Dead actors or, or right. the more experienced uh, TV <laughs> actors. Because yeah, because usually they're the ones that take the limelight at the conventions. Mm -hmm. But I love seeing voice actors come out to the scene too because the anime being more mainstream now. And, and, and video games especially like you know the whole genshin impact thing like, a lot of voice actors are taking advantage of just trying to get their their credits into that game so <laughs> because that, that game is huge like it's still yes. updating it, it's growing massively with the fan base oh yeah and i i really like seeing that kind of growth especially with, with the community like in the anime community or gaming community like that yeah no it's 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 amazing and uh, yeah, I, I love how that how that game in particular is blown up. Um, and and yeah, I think there's a, I don't know. I mean, I guess there is probably more attention, um, especially with anime surging so much, and there is probably a, a a lot more attention on on VAs nowadays, uh, which I think is great because there's so many talented people out there. Um, and I also, uh, you know, partially think they're all great. There are so many great actors too that you know you turn a camera on any of them, and uh, and you would have a TV star as well. Uh, Ashley Birch, for one, you know, she's now doing a lot of uh, on screen, which I think is fantastic because she's a fantastic voice actor. But there's no reason that she shouldn't also be on camera, which is cool, and vice versa. A lot of folks who do on camera. They do a really good job uh, doing voiceover too. So I think you know the industries cross over. I don't know if they've been more separate, and maybe there's more opportunity for it nowadays. But uh, but who knows? I mean, video games are huge too. So I I can't imagine that there wouldn't be on camera celebs, uh, you know, kind of checking out that scene and being like, "What's this motion capture stuff about? What's this performance capture? Yeah. I can still be doing that sort of film." performance that cine that that um that cinema style performance in this medium and i think that there's, there's just a, a lot of really neat opportunities that are popping up yeah and you that you brought up a great point with that because there are a lot of like on on screen camera actors going into video games now like even like there's there's I, i'm not too big on it's too many games because I I've stopped playing games like years ago, but like even like for like Call of Get Duty, back into it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I am playing Genshin though. I haven't had time to play, but I am playing Genshin. Okay. Good. I good. actually I actually spent my last pity on getting Kazuha. <laughs> so 
Thank you very much. <laughs> so yeah, but now with this new the, the new patch update and all these new characters <laughs> from Inazuma, I'm like shit. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, Empty your wallet, please. <laughs> right into here. That's how they get you, man. Yeah, but, gotcha. But, but I was, as I was saying though, like a lot of voice or on-screen camera actors are, are transitioning over. Like even um, I, I brought up The Walking Dead, Stephen Yun playing in mm -hmm. Invincible. You know, they're, yeah. they're doing, doing more animated uh shows now walking and, dead norman reedus in yeah. death stranding mads yes. mickelson not walking dead but you know mads in the same game like yeah like the, their their faces are being used as the modeled characters now mm -hmm. which is crazy because I, I don't you know it's only till like well, the past couple of years now where like gaming the gaming industry still they're taking advantage of that too like you know this is how we, we're going to be able to sell our games now we we put like yeah. these actors on our on our covers so i I think that's pretty cool, but but for you, uh, Mark, being a voice actor as well, do you find that more challenging than when it comes to like certain jobs, knowing that the kind of, like those platforms are kind of like merging in together, knowing that, <laughs> you, you know, because like because I I would feel like it, it's a bit it's it's more like competition, I guess I guess that's the best way I could put it. But yeah, I don't want to do, say it like that either, though. No, that's okay. I was gonna, I was gonna ask. Do you mean in terms of like, are there, uh, is there more competition or are there less opportunities? Right. Or yeah, do, do I? Do you feel like there's less opportunities now because they're like getting more mainstream actors? Um, I, I don't know. I mean. Uh, it's funny i kind of wish i was a fly on the wall in in every production room so that i could actually like really have a good answer for it um i certainly don't see a slowdown in in like auditions uh you know there's there's plenty of material there's so many projects out there um i think more people getting interested in it is is just a net positive though the more the more celebrities or people of note that are getting interested in video games and animation, I feel like that's just going to help the industry to to kind of lift up and have more opportunities for it. Um, you know, I I mean, I could be totally wrong, too. So I don't know. Twenty years from now, me can can uh, can yell at me. But <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really do think that that. Um, you know, getting those sort of high, higher profile people involved and, and drawing more of that audience and having so many more things available uh, is only going to help us all out, um, you know, to like really kind of get that content going. Are there any uh, certain projects that you're trying to aim for as well? <laughs> or, or can you can you say oh least? gosh I, I mean i'm in a lot of i'm in a lot of cool projects that I, I i can't talk about now because of ndas um but um but definitely like i would love to do something uh, at some point in time like a you know like along the lines of like uncharted or the last of us I, i'm really a huge fan of nolan north i think he is just a a brilliant guy and a, one hell of an actor and you know doing a part like drake would be like a dream come true that that would be freaking <laughs> awesome uh and of course like troy baker too I, I really look up to that guy like he is he's fantastic he's a a brilliant actor as well um just really does some interesting stuff and and so you know his performance in the last of us like those those to me are like i'd love to be involved in a project like that someday in that sort of role and capacity so you know just going through auditions and waiting for the right thing to come across um i'm a big video game fan so obviously i, I would need to stop myself from geeking out too much <laughs> so that we could get some work done on set <laughs> <laughs> i i think you know with, with video games though like because because who would have really like at least for us older uh, folks here, because um, <laughs> I'm not too old, but like it, it's just growing up seeing the prog the evolution of gaming, you know. Because I, I grew up, I, I I grew up with like the Super Nintendo and PlayStation uh -huh. One, like that, where voicing wasn't part of that realm of gaming uh, up until like we started getting like the PS2, the PS3, and you know right. that was just a whole new avenue for just opportunities for actors as well, <laughs> and, and, and you know to see how like how it, like like you were saying before like it's just creating more opportunities for everyone yeah. to, to be able to get these roles and, and to get different jobs and it's kind of just all merging into one big 
like entertainment hub now instead because mm-hmm. it's no longer like oh that's just the video game su- a circuit or, or the voice acting circuit you know it, yeah it's all kind of just coming together it's all coming together no i i uh i, I know what you mean like who would have thought and i was like as a kid i i, I don't know i i'm not i'm not gonna say i called anything but i definitely <laughs> was like I definitely was all about video games. Like my parents would ask me, they'd be like, why are you playing all these things? And like, you gotta like do, you know, work or do this and that. And the other thing, and I'm like, these are like works of art. Like you don't <laughs> get it. This is, this is crazy interactive storytelling. There's so much potential here. I remember feeling that way so much when I was playing through the Half-Life series. And I was like, this is just an experience, Half-Life system shock. I was like, this is an experience that unlike any other that that's so interesting. Um, ga- games like Deus Ex. I was like, there's so much potential here for telling really cool stories. And I think where it really landed in my head, where I really started to get excited. Like, of course, gaming me uh, was excited all along. But when Mass Effect hit and I started playing Mass Effect, I was like, holy crap, the freaking <laughs> ship has landed. <laughs> Like we are here. This is this is a cinematic experience that we can get and, and we can kind of like we can slightly adjust it to to be kind of fine tuned for us. But man, the conversations and and uh, and the dialogue in that game like flowed so brilliantly. I don't know. I was just I, I was I was already on board, but I was like I was like pushing people out of the way from steering the ship and I'm like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I again I, I think that's it's a fantastic I like thing to see how just things that were just critiqued on as, as kids growing up, you know, like I, I'm pretty sure your parents did that. You know, you brought that up as well. Like, you know, why, you know, why are you playing games so much? My parents hated it. But you know what's ironic about my parents though? Like they hated the idea that I was playing games, but they still bought me it anyway. So I, I, right. <laughs> and so in a way you're like Ah, but you're still super cool. <laughs> right. you're, you're still caving in. Okay. <laughs> it's funny because I mean, yeah, it, it is, I guess it's, it's, it's a definitely a, a strange thing probably for, I, I don't know. My, my parents uh, grew up uh, in a whole different time. Like they're, they're a little bit older now. They're in their seventies and eighties. So, I mean, video games for them was, was just like this kind of foreign concept. Although I will say right now, my mom, plays red dead redemption 2 <laughs> i freaking love it i love that she plays this game because she used to play and she actually used to play like coleco vision for any any super old school gamers out there um my mom was like she would play like cubert and and mousetrap and ladybug like these crazy uh games and she was like a wizard at them and then she takes this hiatus while all the rest of us are playing like through zelda and metroid and all the all those gaming years and then in her 70s, we're like, all right, mom, we're going to get you back into video games. And we decide to teach her Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> and it's like just the most complicated controls we could have picked for her. <laughs> but she's great. She 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 does really well with it. You know, yeah. I get text messages sometimes that like the waypoints disappeared. And why did that happen? But I really love to see like my folks kind of like stepping into the game genre again, like right now. You know, that that's actually that game. There's so much lore to Red Dead Redemption, and like there's so much content to that game. There's like yeah. there's so much you can do with that game. I think, right. in, in a way, that that's a fantastic idea that you you let your mom play that game because that way, even if she still beat the story <laughs> mode, she could still do so much other things in, in yeah. that game. And then with like the the co op or like playing it in that open world realm. Right. We do the online, right? We got our own posse. We're running around like delivering. She's like, who wants to deliver uh, moonshine today? And we're like, all (laughs) right, let's go. (laughs) Have have you thought of like giving, letting your mom run like a Twitch account and just playing Red Dead? (laughs) With my mom? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's uh, not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, (laughs) uh, Yeah, I haven't uh, haven't really thought about uh, doing (laughs) Twitch, but I guess that would probably be a a good way to approach it. Uh, Might have a unique angle on it there. Yeah, I, I, I'm just like just picturing like you seeing seeing your mom just like I I'm, I don't know your mom but I'm just picturing like seeing like a mother at that mm-hmm. age playing a video game like like my my grandma yeah you know, I think I only made her play games with me once or twice as a kid growing up and, and she she just looked at me like 
why? <laughs> you know, like and then she just <laughs> she's like, I, I don't want to do this. And so I, I stopped bugging my grandma for about that. But like it's just yeah. I think it's really cool, you know, to see that there's still older people out there playing these incredibly interactive games like right. Red Dead Redemption. Holy What'd shit. you introduce your grandma to? Tekken two. <laughs> Tekken, Tekken two, yeah. Tekken, two. Like Tekken, yeah. I I remember this clear as day. Like I was, I think I was like four or five, and I was playing, you know, playing playing that yeah. game, playing a fighting game like that. There's no one to play with because my sister was still too young at that mm -hmm. time. So my grandma would watch us, and I'm like, you know, grandma, come come and play with me. And then she just, <laughs> you know, she just had the controller in her hand. She's like, what am I doing? I'm like, fight me. You, know, you got to fight me in this game. I I want to. <laughs> fight someone and it, like we play like one or two rounds and she's like oh my god this is boring i don't want to do this and she just <laughs> dropped the controller oh <laughs> uh, well hey she tried for a couple yeah. rounds but uh yeah. yeah it just you know and and with my with my family background like they're really like religious so i uh -huh. I, I think to her she's just like this is too violent even though like <laughs> The game is all pixelated right. and old school. <laughs> and like it's 2D. Don't worry. The, they use ketchup for blood. Um, yeah. No, I, I I understand that. But I mean, Tekken. Like, good thing you didn't in introduce her to Mortal Kombat or anything like that. Oh, I know. Yeah. Okay, you made the right I, choice. You know, like Mortal Kombat though, like that that game. I I, I remember when, like, even my folks growing up, growing up, my folks were like, "Don't play that game." You know, Ooh, that, but, yep, that game terrified me, man. Like, <laughs> it was that and uh, Killer Instinct. One, like, oh, one, yeah. One, one of my aunties got so mad at me for introducing my cousin to Killer Instinct. I was like, because I, I played Jago, the ninja. I'm like, dude, that's, mm -hmm. like, that's the best. He's like the Street Fighter character in Killer Instinct. He, he shoots fireballs and does the Shoryuken and stuff like that. And so right. I introduced my cousin to that, and my aunt got pissed. She's like, why are you introducing him to this? This is the devil's work type shit you know i'm like oh my god like what oh, the no. hell it's a, it's a like, video don't, game don't watch harry potter <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know it just like when, when you look look at it like just those games back then it was mm -hmm. that bad already could you imagine like with that mindset from back then playing the games now people would lose their minds <laughs> that would be nuts I always, I often, uh, uh, my my girlfriend and I, we often have this fantasy of being like, what if we could pick up someone from like ancient Rome or like classical like antiquity and drop them into any given scenario around town? The other day we were just like, and I want someone to be on the plane with us right now and just blow their minds. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you know, I want to show like, or people from even like back when movies were first being made, I want to like sit them down in a theater and show them like, the blockbusteriest Marvel explosion that can possibly happen, you know, and just see how they'd react. It's a fantasy <laughs> of mine. If anyone invents a time machine, time machine, that's what we're gonna do with it first thing. <laughs> we'll suck yeah. people back. Yeah, they just like the evolution of like just how not just entertainment itself, but like even like with TV shows and cartoons and 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 with the help of like social media and stuff like that is everything's yeah. just growing so quickly. And do do you do you find it difficult at times as well? Like because there's everything's moving so quickly as an actor, do you feel like there's like a kind of catch up game to it? Like if I miss out on this, um, then you know I I need to <laughs> get these opportunities now, or else I'm going to miss out. Man, you know it always it feels like that a lot sometimes with with certain projects because oh god, I like my my heart like burns and yearns for certain projects and auditions that they come across, and I'm like oh, I have to get this one. If I miss it, my life is over. Um, but at the same time, I felt that way about enough projects now <laughs> that I haven't gotten and, and some that I have to also see that there are going to be more projects down the line. There are going to be more things that are coming out. Uh, so, so I don't, I know that there will always be cool stuff. There's going to be the next cool thing. I don't have to worry about that. Um, now, as far as like, do I need to like level my skills up with it? How, <laughs> how is like the industry functionally changing? I don't know. That's what I, that was actually going to be uh, one of my questions thrown right back at you is like, kind of where do you think all this is going? Like you said, it changes so often, like, like uh, especially the gaming industry has been, has been changing by leaps and bounds. And I remember geeking out about like, polygons and like triangles on on uh, you know tomb raider like <laughs> and yet when i look back at it i'm like do you know what i mean like like looking back in in some of these things are like ocarina of time in my mind ocarina of time 
looks like lifelike. But yeah. then when I see screenshots, I'm like, what? <laughs> like we, we played this. Was that, we... was that what blew my mind back yeah. then? It, I, I, you know, with, with like just because I've only tasked, like put my feet in like just podcasting in, in general, but like the seeing how fast even podcast is growing, you know, mm -hmm. and how it went from just similar to radio. It was just like radio talk. And now everyone's with, I, I think, I think COVID really just pushed everyone to be like, we need to do something quick. And podcast <laughs> was like a opportunity that everyone took. Cause there, mm -hmm. there's people that I know that like just started podcasting a year or two ago and, and next, you know, they're they're, you know, they're they're gaining views and, and stuff like that. And it's crazy how how quickly people have to find their their niche in in this creative field. You know, whether you're like a content creator, or Twitch streamer, podcaster, actor, whatever. Like this this time of like being trapped at home during uh, the whole COVID thing, like you had to be quick. Uh -huh. and, and and you know for me i was doing the podcasting i was i was podcasting just on my own just before covid hit and then by the time i knew it i'm like holy crap there's so many podcasters out here i gotta like really step up my <laughs> game <laughs> right no but i also think i mean again that's kind of cool too like that that folks can jump into stuff like that i think it's i think it's cool as in as a creative medium you get to find your footing you get to talk to cool folks uh, you know, hopefully get some tra traction, connect with an audience. And like, it, it is neat there. It's, it's kind of like everyone was like, oh no, radio's dying. And, and we all got very sad about that, that, that somehow radio has disappeared. What's happening to the, uh, this industry. And yet this entire new one is like out of the ashes, especially in the past year and a half, yeah. there's so much content. And, and I think that that's a really cool thing. There are a lot of people who are able to put their creative wits to good use. And there's a lot of folks that are interested in specific things. And now they have a podcast for it, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, now you can find it. Yeah, there's a podcast. Like like anime, there's a podcast genre for everyone. You, know? mm -hmm. it, it, you, you, you just got to find the right, you know, the right host or the right team or group that you're listening to. And, and, and you know, for your for your podcast, Mark, I know you, you, you run two, right? Uh, the, yeah. The, the theater uh, one and then the hotel pod. Yes, it's the theater of tomorrow and okay, the hotel yeah, pod. Right. Yeah, and they're both uh, audio dramas. Um, we're still kind. Of, I still kind of wish there was a different name for it. We say radio plays, but it's not really on the radio. And radio <laughs> play does sound very antiquated. Although the theater of tomorrow's theme is that we are kind of like an antiquated radio play with with a modern sensibility to it um and that's where we really started we wanted to do that sort of um that sort of radio play thing but with telling modern stories riffing off of uh you know sci-fi from decades and decades past and and for me it was like a cool way for me to explore doing tons of different voices like the the number of parts i've been able to play on the theater of tomorrow and the hotel um is just fantastic like some sometimes whenever i get a question of like what are your favorite roles and i'm like i gotta think of things that like people know that are like you know actually on my imdb page but some of my favorite roles are from the theater of tomorrow like <laughs> characters that i got to create and direct myself um it feels very personal um and, and also and also very very much like like the art i get to create Kind of like, you know, if there's if there's like a like painters, there's a painter you you paint for yourself, but then you also paint commissions. And so the commissions is probably the work you get paid for and that you get known for. But painting for yourself is also can, can also be really cool and beautiful and unique because there's certain things that I may be doing that uh, that the whatever project just may not be looking for. But I can I can put my spin on it, and there's no like there's no crazy production team behind it to be like nah, but we're we're sculpting it this way. It's it's how I want to sculpt it. It's how myself and my writing partner Travis want to create this show, and it's been really awesome. Um, so yeah, if anyone's into like sci-fi stories, horror stories, um, check out both of those podcasts: Sci-Fi Theater of Tomorrow and Horror is the Hotel Pod. And yeah. It's it's just been a lot of fun. I've gotten to work with a lot of cool voice actors on them too, bring on some guests and uh and do a lot of neat things.
That's amazing, man. Yeah. And for the listeners and viewers, I'll have that all those links in the show notes and description as well. So you can check out uh, Mark's other pod, uh, podcast too, the Hotel Pod and the Theater of Tomorrow. And, and you know, <clears throat> as, as we're coming to an end here, Mark, I want to say, you know, thank you so much for just giving me your time here. And, um, you know, I would have never thought that I'd be speaking to Ren Goku, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you know, like, the, again, the movie just came out earlier this year and then it went digital in June. So uh, right, to me, right. it's, it's very, I, I am still like in love with, with Infinity Train and, and just how you, again, I cannot praise you enough and how you played that role was was great and, and i can't wait to see what more you haven't like what more projects you're gonna be working with man because i i feel like you know n- now that i know that you're just finally getting more of these roles post covid and me now being going to conventions and meeting your fans i really do hope that you get much more opportunities to grow your content as well thank you so much i really appreciate that um it's meant a lot also meeting uh the fans even at just this last con uh, to uh, in Dallas at Weebcon, uh, just being to being able to really see folks face to face, and and have them be able to express just how much you know Mugen Train meant to them and how much that movie affected them, and especially during this time that we've all been going through. And I've I've had people come up and be like, "This is you know it's been it's been a rough time," and this movie gave me a lot of hope um there was someone who even told me that like that phrase set your heart ablaze gave him a lot of hope and to me i was like my god if if that's not exactly what we're doing this for i don't know what is you know yeah that 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 phrase myself like you know i i've been through a lot of personal things as well and i just again with 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 demon slayer and and with the way how ren goku went out whether you know it, as tragic as it was he still went out in a positive manner and, and you know the whole that phrase set your heart ablaze that and, and that's why i keep that in, in my headline for instagram and for for twitter you know i i remind myself of that phrase you know and when he when he tells tandro you need know, you grit your teeth forward and the time's not going to stop for you mm-hmm. you know you have to keep moving and you know that it's a daily reminder for me it's almost like a mantra in a way yeah. to where so like I I have to keep pushing myself whether it's with the podcast here or, or working on this farm here in Oklahoma out in the boonies you know like I I have to keep moving forward and you know I, I again I cannot thank you enough Mark for this for for just this opportunity man because like as a fan speaking to you I am still surprised at times where I'm like I'm I'm actually speaking to people on my podcast it's it's insane. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm so happy that you are, man. And uh, it, it has been an absolute pleasure. And I hope that you have many, 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 many more guests to come. And I'm sure you will. Oh, yeah, definitely. And if you ever feel like you want to come back on just to do this again, man, <laughs> please let me know. And I will make time for you, man. I, I, I will I will push schedules and rearrange episodes to make sure that I, I can have you back on the podcast again. <laughs> Hell, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, can you also let uh, the listeners and fans know where they can reach you if they're interested in following your content and your podcast as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Theater of Tomorrow and The Hotel are both available on iTunes, Spotify, and basically wherever you get podcasts. So you can just uh, look us up through that. We also have websites, uh, theateroftomorrow.com, theater with an R-E, and the Hotel Horror Podcast.com. And that'll be able to lead you one way or another to there. Uh, I'm on Twitter at MP Witten, W-H-I-T-T-E-N. And on Instagram at M Witten. Um, probably a bit more active on Twitter, but hey, follow on both. I uh, really appreciate it. And um, there'll be links there for any and announcements for any upcoming cons and appearances. And I hope to have just a whole mess of them to share with y'all. Perfect. And, and that's a great way to end this episode. So again, Mark, thank you so much for your time. And uh, thank you to everyone who's tuned in and watched. Again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to not just Spoil the Force podcast, but to Theater Tomorrow and the Hotel Pod. And make sure you follow Mark on his journey as well. And thank you guys so much and have a great day. Take care, everyone.
you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, and rate Spoiler Force Podcast. If you have any guest recommendations, comments, questions, concerns, or criticism, you can email me at rickyvang92 at gmail.com or message me online on any of my social media platforms.